Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and welcome to the first segment in a series that I'm very excited to present to you guys on Thought Experiments. Uh, today we're going to be going over what's called Newton's Canon, um, and that would be in reference to Sir Isaac Newton here. So what you guys should know about Sir Isaac Newton here is that he was a f mathematician, a physicist, an astronomer, a theologist, an author, and overall just a widely influential natural philosopher. And Newton's canon was a thought experiment from one of his larger publications, the Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica. Um, I'm not sure if I said that right, but uh, it's a mouthful. He used this thought experiment in order to get people asking a lot of questions about gravity and the nature of the world that we live in just as a whole. Well, not like a whole, but like a world, you know, like the whole thing. making sure. So a little bit later on in the publication, Newton visualizes a mountain, a big mountain like this, uh, something that would make air resistance up here negligible. There's not a lot of, if any, air up there. And upon that mountaintop is going to be a cannon, just an old-timey cannon. Uh, we're talking gunpowder and a lead ball with its barrel pointed horizontal to the Earth's surface. And essentially, Newton proposed that if up here, air resistance is negligible and gravity is negligible if you get high enough off the Earth, and then you fire this cannon, the projectile should leave the barrel and continue on in a straight line like so, um, in the same direction it was fired away from the Earth. However, we do know that, just from experience, when you fire a cannon from a high elevation, the gravity causes the cannonball to inevitably hurl back towards Earth, destroying whatever in its path. Isaac Newton realized this, and him being a pretty smart guy, understood that if you add more gunpowder to the cannon into the equation here, that would cause the initial velocity, or the starting speed, of the cannonball to be much faster, allowing you to cover more distance with your cannon. However, uh, the cannonball inevitably comes crashing towards Earth every time. So what's up? Why does the ball keep falling? If there's no air resistance, what, what causes the ball to fall? Newton uses this to illustrate a point about the universal nature of gravity. It's not just something that's here on Earth, but something that permeates the entire universe as a whole. Which is awesome, but Isaac Newton also realized that the Earth was round, and it had an arc to it that the cannon might be able to follow. So his question quickly, very quickly I'm sure, became, can we increase the cannonball's initial velocity fast enough to where it hits us in the back of the head? To where the lead cannonball goes around the entire Earth and just smacks us. Hmm. Man, that would be unfortunate. So this right here, this is kind of the core question behind the Newton's Cannon Thought Experiment. Can we increase the cannonball's velocity fast enough to hit ourselves in the back of the head? And if so, how could we do it? How fast does the ball need to go? What needs to happen? Um, yeah. So what do you guys think? I'm super curious. Do you guys believe that cannonballs inevitably fall every time? Or do you think that if you fire it too fast, it'll just fly off the earth? Um, what do you guys think? I'm super curious as to your comments. Before moving on, I highly suggest you pause the video and find a friend or maybe somebody who has a good grasp of this kind of stuff and discuss this idea with them. So we are going to go over the answers to this question in my next video, so definitely be sure to subscribe for that. And if you guys have any other cool thought experiments you would like to see me co cover, color, <laughs> just leave a comment. So when you're approaching this problem, either alone or with your friend, keep in mind that we're going to be ignoring air resistance for this problem. Uh, it's We're just going to assume that the mountain is high enough to where air resistance is negligible and that's not going to be a force that messes with the cannonball in any way, shape, or form, okay? Uh, I mean, we can always talk about it. I'd love to talk about it, but not for the problem. Anyways, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next time.
Alright you guys, thank you for watching my very first video. This has been a very exciting journey for me and I'm super hyped to get this project of mine off the ground. If you like this video or want to see more like it, you could check out my channel. And if you find this work important or valuable uh, and want to help me out, feel free to check out my Patreon page. I want to put a link to both my Patreon and the next video in the series uh, down below, so be sure to check those out. Oh, and uh, links in the description as well if those don't work. Okay guys, um, yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time. So, what you guys should know about Sir Isaac Newton here is that he was an English mathematician, physicist, theologian, then if you fired the cannon, it would fire straight, um, he was a mathematician, a physicist, an astronomer, a theologian, Theologist. Theologist. He knows that if you fire, if you add more gunpowder to the cannon, it will. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> he really laid out the groundwork for a lot of the bigger questions about the. <sighs> I'm not, I didn't script that part. Where's my cat? He was a mathematician. A physicist, an astronomer, a theolog theologist? God, how do you say that? Theologist, theologist. Theologist, I'm just gonna say theologist. When we do fire a cannon, the gravity inevitably. 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 Oh no, oh no, oh god. <laughs>